Hello Lurkers! I'm Lauren Stone, the owner and founder of PopLurker.com. Hey guys and welcome to a very exciting video where we're going to talk about all about Sailor Moon Stars. And today we are having a Sailor Stars discussion with the amazing irreplaceable Sailor Tortilla. Sailor Stars was amazing to find out about. I remember back in the day when, you know, obviously we kept seeing halfway through Sailor Moon R on uh, Toonami on loop for years. And I know that even before Toonami, people would catch it on public television. I wasn't there for me. I caught Sailor Moon on Toonami. That was my introduction. But, you know, we only got it up to that certain point. So when you got to look at artwork or animated GIFs or wallpapers in your desktop themes that you downloaded of Eternal Sailor Moon with the outlandish color scheme and those wings, you're like, what was happening? I need to see more of this. And then you'd see the group pictures or the bootleg posters that covered my room and there were the sailor starlights and so you were just like who are these characters and then the fan subs came out and my local comic book shop had a whole wall of bootleg videos of fan subbed you know from the laser discs and that's where i first saw those gorgeous i might bet you know put in a, a picture right here the gorgeous artwork of like seiya with his arms around sailor starfighter or Taiki back to back with, you know, Sailor Star Maker. You know, you remember the, that artwork. I do. I think that's some of the best artwork we ever had. I absolutely agree with you. And seeing those, I was just like, I need to find out more about these characters. So again, luckily, my comic book store had the videos. So I got to pick up the one. I bought the one with Seiya on the cover. And that was, it started off, I think, with the camping trip where the three lights were filming that movie and then the girls went camping and then Ray's cousin was the, the pottery sculptor and he's saying, it's a failure, it's a failure, and he's smashing everything. That was like some of my first introduction to Sailor Stars and I loved it. I loved those, the three lights. I loved the addition of those characters. They did take out the outer senshi and Mamoru to kind of focus on these three but they were exciting and they changed the, the dynamic of the show so much you know for better or for worse like i loved minako you know all boy crazy excited minako all up, up on yaten i loved seeing ami cracking out of her shell intrigued by taiki and then we have usagi xeya the scandal <laughs> I'm really glad that you brought up the whole aspect about the personality in Stars. You're right, like they kind of turned everybody up to 11. They added some interesting little quirks like like Ami enjoying the band, but you know, she's still, you know, super studious. It's like her deep dark secret. Um, and dude, that Pots guy, <laughs> I recently watched the new dub of that and it is ridic. I want a gif of it. I want to put it on Twitter of the guy just going, failure. That guy has no chill. That guy sucks. Um, like super weird and I, you don't want to, I mean, maybe actually, I, I think the stars dub is pretty good. Um, but that guy, I was trying to find him on Google specifically for the purpose of responding to someone on Twitter. Um, I typed in sailor moon failure guy and I think Umino came up. It was really pathetic and sad. Oh no, actually, no, it wasn't Umino. I'm wrong. It was Jedite. And that makes a lot more sense actually. Oh, poor Jedi. Yeah, like try typing in Sailor Moon failure guy and you'll see it's it's Jedi. You're never going to find the guy with the pots. Like no one knows about that episode. Only five people, including you and me, know about that episode <laughs> or remember it. It was, yeah, it was Ray's cousin and he made her this magical, like he made her this phoenix necklace that was sparkly and like had been cooked in the, um, the oven for this, you know, the pottery oven. And she's like, my cousin gave it to me years ago. I'm like, I've been watching 180 episodes of this and I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah, that's new. I don't know. But also he like gave her like childhood PTSD by like screaming around her. It was fucked up. <laughs> There's just no nice way of putting it. But yeah, I, I completely like I resonate so much with the fan subs because like Dude, you're so right. Like online, I'd see pictures of the Sailor Starlights and like maybe as a kid, you were like, these outfits are a little scandalous. I don't really know how this fits in the Sailor Moon, but I mean, they are designed by Naoko Takeuchi. They are like 100% Sailor Moon. And like, that was kind of the weird thing about stars because like Sailor Moon S kind of had those very sexual monsters, but I think in star, right? Like with the, with the breast, with the stars, 
the actual, they literally had like a star on their breast in a season that wasn't called Stars. I'm like, it's super confusing. The villains and the Sailor Anima mates in legitimate lingerie. Yes, you're, yes, exactly. Like finally in Stars, art villains are not wearing outfits anymore. They're wearing lingerie. The Sailor Starlight show up in their little bikinis and it's, it's a new time. It's a new era. I feel like Sailor Moon liked to um, push boundaries a little bit, especially for like children's like TV. Like I know Japan is different and their standards are different, but I think Sailor Stars was just a little, little over the top in terms of the sexuality of the villains or, or the way that they're sex, they're, they're not even sexual, they're just sexy. And I like that. I'm like on a whole tangent though, sorry. <laughs> I think, you know, Sailor Stars was a problem in many countries. I used to read about the different dubs. In Italy, they had such a problem with the male to female and back again that they made up this whole story about how they were tw all three were twins. And we all know that male and men and women cannot be identical twins. They can only be fraternal because that's the way genetics work. And so there was this whole story made up for the Italian dub. You think we had it bad with the, what was it, the Cusbians, the lesbians? Like, you think we had it bad with, like, some of them turning male to female characters and, like, Zoisite and, and Malachite? No. They made up this story in the Italian dub about how the three lights were dudes, and when trouble ar arose, they would call on the powers of their identical female twin sisters. What, was it that worth it? Couldn't they have just been- Can you imagine how lazy? I don't want to fight. I'll just call my sister. Hm, it's fine. Okay, whatever. It's so strange. Um, so that was the Italian dub. And, you know, we are in a way being presumptuous discussing that the- that the male to female- I don't even want to be accidentally disrespectful and call it transgender. Although, and this goes into one of the topics we're, we're discussing about fan reception of stars, you have manga purists now who are like, no, Naoko Takeuchi wrote them as female, they are female, and so I will call Seiya Taiki and Yaten she all the time. But in my perspective, I really feel that Seiya was very clearly a transgender character, a trans man, and... I think, and this might be getting too, like, big of the conversation, but I think that the populace should respect the pronouns that this character clearly would have wanted. Yeah, or even, you know, just gender fluidity. Like, how could you be more gender fluid than literally transforming your body with magic? Um, I mean, I have no idea what I would call Seiya. I think I would just call Seiya they, <laughs> just to be on the safe side. Um, but for the purpose of this conversation, like, I feel like when say is male, say is male. And when say is female, say is female. And it's like, it's very cut and dry because it's magic. It's not real life. Like, I know that in real life, like, being trans is, like, way more complicated and way more hard than if you're a magical girl, magical boy. Um, but yeah, I, I hear those manga purists a lot. Um, I mod a very large Sailor Moon group on Facebook. And, like, that's kind of, like, where a lot of, like, my research for this video comes from. It's usually the fights. We have a lot of fights of a lot of people who have never seen stars before and they're trying to like quantify, try to figure it out. And it's just, it's very like, I don't want to say that if stars had come out in the US when we were younger, this would have happened. I think this is only a modern phenomenon where we really have to focus on identity. That, that wasn't so much, like, that's not the reason we didn't get stars. We didn't get stars because they just didn't know what to do with a purportedly transgender group of characters. I mean, that's just all it was. I feel that when Cloverway got S, or the, they got the end of R and S and Super S, that tanked. That didn't do good on Cartoon Network. No, we were so used to the series stopping at a certain point that we didn't want that terrible dub. And by then, I feel like so many of us had taken it into our own hands and the people who wanted to watch S owned the fan dubs or... Um, had friends who showed it to them or had seen S Sailor Stars by this point. Um, and then so many people thought that the story tanked in Super S that they just tapped out. Maybe that's why ratings were low. Yeah, you're... Yeah, you're pretty right. They tapped out because we didn't have the outers and people really fucking love the outers. Absence was very bizarre. Now, if you look at 
many, how do I put this? If you look at sitcom conventions and formulas, when things start getting weird, they focus on a child. And that's maybe what happened with, you know, Chibi Usa and her, and her boyfriend horse. Boyfriend horse. I don't even want to go there. <laughs> that's, that whole season. You went there, you went there in that one video. You went there in that one video where you were talking about Sailor Moon and you and you brought up, and I cited this in one of my Sailor Moon videos on Pop Lurker, you had cited that very, and we don't have to, I don't have to do the imitations, but I will if you need me to, but we both cited, you cited the sound clip, and I knew exactly what you were talking about with the like, do you feel it, beautiful girl? Wow, Pegasus! I know, I know, and it gets weird. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was pretty weird, and like, that season wasn't just weird because of the Cloverway dub. That season was weird when I saw it on fansub VHSs. And like, you're a million percent right. Like, the people who really like Sailor Moon, who had the ability to like, go to a comic shop and grab those fan subs, like, we weren't happy with that Cloverway dub at all. Like, I wouldn't have watched Stars even if Cloverway had dubbed it. Like, and the other thing is, and you tell me if I'm wrong, Cartoon Network didn't really advertise that we were getting new episodes of Sailor Moon until we did. Because I know I didn't catch um, the, the Cloverway dub. I caught it, like, midway. I didn't even know it had started. There was so much fan disappointment by the time S showed up. So here's here's how I remember it. Maybe people will remember this too. The way I remember it is we stopped in R um, at the Rubius saga. So before Prince Diamond and all of them Emerald showed up. So that's where we that's where they that's where Deke cut off. And I under I, from what I understand, it was for syndication purposes. So then the, we got the rest of those episodes. They called them like Sailor Moon: The Lost Episodes. And then then it was announced that okay, those lost episodes, that last thirteen ep episodes of R, whatever it was, did pretty well. We were excited. So now we're gonna get Sailor Moon S. So fans were kind of going nuts. We were like, what are gonna be the Outer Senshi's names? And we were all speculating because the Irwin Toys named them they named them um well not, not amar they named them corin nerissa and i don't remember what they named pluto i have it in an article somewhere um was it trista or was that the official name trista is what they ended up naming her in the cloverway dub it was yeah it was it was um corin nerissa and something else and fans and yeah something garbage probably <laughs> Something garbage. And fans had been speculating for years what their names were going to be. People were calling Pluto like Susan, and they were calling um, Haruka Alex. That was kind of the agreed upon name. And then I don't remember what they were calling Michiru. It was probably always Michelle. But then Amara, Michelle, and Trista showed up. And, and then they were cousins. And we were just out. We're like, no. Like, no! <sighs> They did a terrible job. And when they gave Michelle, Sailor Neptune, the same voice as Usag or Serena's mom. Are you kidding me? Like, you've just told me for like six years that this is mom. And now you're telling me that it's like Sailor Neptune. You can't do that. You can't do that. Yeah, it was casting wise. I don't know what they were thinking. Directing wise. I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, like that dub is hot garbage. I do, I do envision her mom every time I hear Neptune in the Cloverway dub. It's, it's just. I could talk about the Cloverway dub forever. I really could. That that could be a follow up. Yeah, so it was so gross. Like the I am Sailor Neptune. I'm like, oh, there was nothing elegant about you. No, it was just, and and to to their benefit, apparently that was super rushed to talk about so that's kind of our reasons of probably some of the reception of stars in japan because if things started getting wonky around super s and people to this day talk about it being violating the 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 amazon trio sticking their heads into blushing screaming girls dreams it's not it's not so good no it makes me uncomfortable it makes me uncomfortable too. Um, at the time, it made me uncomfortable. It was unnecessary. But the 90s, you know, and this is also a separate topic, but I've talked about it before in other videos and articles. The 90s was Fushigi Yugi. 
every plot point was those girls being compromised. That's how they moved plots back in the 90s. And it wasn't right, but it was a trope, unfortunately. And Sailor Moon adhered to this very unfortunate and toxic trope because all 90s anime, especially shoujo, did that. So I think it started falling there. And by the time Stars came around in Japan, those ratings were already dropping. And so it just didn't stand, it just didn't stand a chance. No. And then, you know, today, obviously it's been on Hulu for years and you still have so many people only seeing it today. And going back to what you were saying, they're fighting. What are they fighting about? What's going on? So at the end of this, really, Stars is nearly a, what, 25 year old long gone franchise. It went off the air in 1997 been on Hulu translated for many years at this point. People are still just now consuming it and they're having these big reactions to it, but not the big reactions that I think that Toei at the time, Deke, or any other people who had the license to dub it and put it on television thought that that we were going to react to. I don't know what what where they thought the problem stemmed from at that time. And back when we were young, when I was in the 14, 15, 16 year old range and completely obsessed with stars and showing the end of the Sailor Moon series to anybody who would watch with me, none of us had the issues with it that I think new fans are coming up with. And I'm not saying those, those, um, I'm not saying those thoughts or feelings are invalid, but they're coming from a very different place than we were coming from 25 years ago. And I don't know if older people are watching it now, so you have a more mature headspace, or because we were young and we had nothing else to compare it to, so we accepted it and we loved just seeing these characters in action. Yeah, I don't even, I don't even like to participate sometimes. Like, it's, it's easy to say, like, I have this personal feeling or that personal feeling, but like, when your brain has always been like, I accept this season, I'm fine with it. And like, you're asked to question it. You're just like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I need to question my tastes right now. I don't need to know if Usagi's bi or not. I don't know, Usagi's Usagi. <laughs> like, that's it. Let her do what she wants. All right. Anyway, this has been Sailor Tortilla. I do Sailor Moon collectibles news and reviews. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm Lauren Stone with poplurker.com. Check out our site for all sorts of evergreen content. Make sure that you like and subscribe to Sailor Tortilla. Follow her all over social media. I'll have all those links below. I'll make sure that you guys know exactly where she is as well. And I'll catch you for the next one. Bye. Good? Oh, I should have done that too. <laughs> I'm doing, but I'll figure it out later.